Today I'm going to be reviewing this super silent oil free compressor. I'm Steve and welcome to my channel. Now the reason I bought this uh, compressor was because I did a bit of spraying and with my old compressor and then I realized that it was spitting out a little bit of oil and contaminating the paint finish now that is all in my last video and I will put a link uh, below this video in the description um, I I paid for this compressor with my, my own money and Hyundai have not contacted me and I've got no affiliation with Hyundai or the company that supplied this. Um, at the end of this video, I will be doing a pros and cons and I will be going through all the specifications of this compressor and the company that supplied it. Well, right, I've just put the first wheel on and it's clamping it. There's a problem with the sizes here. So what's happened, this shoulder bolt is is below below this bu bush when you when you assemble it so something's happened Sh the shoulder bolt length has changed or the width of that spacer has changed or the width of that washer has changed or the width of the wheel has changed so they've obviously changed their supply of parts and there's been a clash of sizes so I'm going to file this spacer down until the wheel spins nicely. Right, well, it didn't take a lot. I filed half a mil off of here. So that one is 13 mil. That one's 12 and a half mil wide. And that half a mil has made all the difference. I think the problem might be this wheel because look, it's not very poor quality. It's running out. It's good enough for this for what this what you want on this it's good enough for that but that's all it needed was half a mil taken out I don't know if this is going to come out on camera but I've noticed a fault with this before I even turn it on um, there's the drain plug there now if you can see that this end of the tank is lower and this end of the tank so the problem that's okay no problem but all the water is going to collect on this end of the tank so the bottom of this tank needs to be level so that when you undo the drain plug all the water then has got more chance of coming out you don't want water being left this end of the tank because it's just going to rust the tank and it, and it won't last so long. Right, I solved that problem by putting 19 mil spacers there. So this, this side was 19 mil lower than that side. I've just found my grandfather's old spirit level. So that goes on the top and so there's the proof. So that's level. So if the top's level, the bottom's going to be level. There's two inlet filters, one goes here and one goes here. Um, and this pipe, I think, has got a point downwards. So I've had to put this washer on, it's a fibre washer, um, to enable me to get that pipe to point downwards. I don't quite understand why, but... So that points down like that. So these two inlet filters are made of metal. Now I've read on the internet when I was looking up this uh, compressor, people saying that uh, these stick out too much and they're easily broken off. And I think the original ones might have been plastic. So they've made these, they're a bit flimsy. And there's, to get the filter out, there's a bayonet fixing. They're supposed to be pushed in and turned but there's no way that can I can turn that I put that in the vise pushed on here and tried to turn it 
and it just won't turn so the only way to change that filter is to bend these tabs up like that and then it opens and that's the filter inside so um, I'll keep a close eye on these filters uh, because they're not very big they will get blocked up quite easily I'm not impressed with these at all um, I'll put that washer on there to get the right position that's not a problem really but that really is not acceptable look at that that's very very loose so I'm fighting of stripping the thread if I do this up too tight because this is aluminium now this is a standard quarter BSP fitting and when I put that on there it's it's a bit loose but that's acceptable so the problem is this thread here what they should have done was made this uh, BSP tapered thread and have a tapered thread on here and then obviously it will tighten itself up but now they've gone with parallel threads so I'm just doing that by hand so I'm all ready to go um, I'm going to turn it on for the first time and I'm going to time it to see how long it takes to pump up I'm going to make that shut so I'm going to do it both at the same time Okay, that's taken 2 minutes 33 seconds. Right, so it's pumped up to about 7 bar and it's just about lunchtime now so I'm going to have my lunch and I'm going to come back and see if that has dropped any. It's exactly one hour since I pumped this com compressor up and so it's dropped about half a bar, bar. so that's where the the, the needle was I'll put a mark on there you can just about see that mark there so it's it's about 7 psi it's dropped in an hour so I think what I'm going to do I'm going to get some soapy water and I'll go around all the joints okay I've got some fairy liquid mixed with water and I've gone around all the joints and they're all okay except for this one now that is my fault because I've got to own up to it I took this fitting off because this is I think they call it a Euro fitting and my garage uses Stralgia all the way around and I was going to replace this so then I put it back um, to do the review um, and obviously I didn't put anything on the thread when I put that back so I'm going to release all the pressure and I'm going to put some well seal on that thread or some PTFE tape and then I'll pump it up again and leave it hopefully that that, that should solve any leaks I have right well, I fixed that leak there that's fine so what I did I just put this this well seal on it and the reason I didn't use PTFE tape is because you can get loose bits getting into the pipe and obviously we don't want that getting in and into the spray spray gun and I've noticed that none of the joints on, on here use the PTFE tape they use something that is similar to this maybe I may even use that but that has solved the problem so now I'm gonna leave it for another hour it's been exactly one hour now pumped up like that and you can see it has moved a little bit but uh, that's not much at all so you know that, that is just a couple of psi or something so that's absolutely acceptable that's fine i let some air out until it turned on again 
and then I timed it how long it took to pump it up again and it was 49 seconds from on to off so the reason why these compressors are so quiet is because the stroke is very short um, and the diameter is, is big so you could that is that is the cylinder it, that cylinder is just clamped in there and inside there there's a, 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 a piston with just like I think it's one plastic uh, piston ring on there now as I, I zoom in zoom in there now that there is the con rod so as I turn it on you see that that's what the stroke is now I'm talking over this there's no way I could have talked over the old Right, something I've just realised, this is a 50 litre compressor and so is this a 50 litre compressor, you can actually see it on there. Um, but as you can see, the old one is about 6 inches longer than this one. So they can't both be 50 litre. So either this one's more or this one's less. So now I'm going to do some measurements and calculations and see if I'll come come up with a figure. Well that didn't work. I went online and there are calculators that will calculate the volume of a cylinder. The problem is it doesn't calculate the volume of these two domes. So when, when I measure the diameter and the length from weld to weld it, it comes out much less. This one's much less and this one's even smaller. So I don't, I don't know how you calculate the dome so I've got a feeling this one is correct I don't know but I'm just guessing if anyone knows how to calculate how many litres there are in, in a tank with two dome dome dens um, I'll be very interested to try to get to the bottom of this now s someone did say online when they were writing about these compressors that the manufacturer seems to exaggerate all the figures now this is 11 cfm that's cubic feet per minute and that is the displacement of their of of the of it um, i don't know what the displacement of this one is um, that is not what comes out of here so what comes out of here they're saying about five or six cubic feet per minute um, so i don't know if this 11 CFM is correct or whether they're exaggerating it I don't know so my son suggested that I could calculate these dome dens as half a sphere in the same that end so all I need to do is calculate a sphere with the same diameter as this tank because it's two halves so I've just done that and the results are this one works out at 58.69 litres. So obviously the calculation is going to be more because the a sphere comes out to here. So it's 8 litres more this one is. Now the new one works out at 49.47 litres. So that is less. So this is definitely, this new one, is definitely not 50 litres because I've calculated it as a bigger sphere than it actually is. So it's pointing again towards these, this manufacturer exaggerating the figures. So now I'm going to do a sound comparison between the two compressors. Um, I'm two metres away from the camera and um, I'm going to turn them on. but. It doesn't mean much because what you're going to hear isn't the same as it is in real life but you can hear the difference between the two so here's the old one and here's the new one so i can talk over this you can probably hear me but you won't be able to hear me over this one
The reason I removed this quick release fitting here is because it's not the same as the system that I use in this garage. Now this is called a UO connector and that's what it that's what it looks like and it's very good because it's got a big hole in the middle and that's what you want with a fitting really and you've only got to just push it down and it releases so that's okay but it doesn't match what I've got so what I've got is a shrouder valve which is like that and that goes in there and to release this one you have to turn it which can be awkward with one hand sometimes but there's also a third system and that's called PCL so that's the PCL one and it's got a smaller hole and that is similar to Euro where you just push it down and it pops out so that's what I've got but I'm leaving this on here and um, I can just use this to connect to the rest of the system when I get around to doing it just before I left the garage last night I pumped the compressor up and it's now seven hours later I've left it overnight and that's how much it's gone down so that is very good because I can pump it up at the beginning of the day and I know that I have that pressure all day long if I need it. I've been looking at this label on the side of, of the new compressor and as you can see it says 300 litres per minute. Now I've converted it to uh, cubic feet per minute and it works out at 10.6 near enough. So they've rounded it up to 11 because all the advertising for these compressors says 11 feet per minute. So now I'm going through the specifications and the pros and the cons. So this is advertised as a 50 litre uh, 11 cubic feet per minute compressor. Now as we know that it's less than 50 and they've rounded this up when it comes to the cubic feet figure. Um, it has these, both these motors combined are one and a half kilowatts and that gives seven bars pressure. So I, I bought it from a company called Gen Power Limited and I paid 300 pound and their website is very good. I just went on the website and I ordered this. So the gem power was very good. Can't fault them. It came within within a week or within a few days, no problem. Came at, and that was very good. So the pros and the cons. So the, the best thing about this is it's so quiet and that's why I bought it. This was the biggest um, silent compressor I could find and the other the other good thing is that there's no oil so these are self lubricated uh, pistons i don't quite know how that works but it's good so this is all open there's no oil in here so on the end of the motor there's a ball, ball bearing on on the um, crankshaft and it's all open so they're all self lubricated that's how it works um well, the other pro is easy to maintain, as I just said. Um, the other good thing I, I, I found, it, it was quite quick to pump it up compared to my old com compressor. That was a good thing. Um, another good thing I haven't talked about is this, oh, there's no pressure now, but is, there's a water trap here. And that, that has trapped some water in the few times that I've pumped it up. And you just pull that down to drain it. So I thought that's good. Um, and the other good thing is that when I pumped it up and left it overnight, it didn't really go down compared to my old one. So, but that, that, you'd expect that with a new compressor anyway. So now we go on to the cons. As you saw, the wheels are crap. They were no good. I had to file the little spacer down so that they would 
um, go round freely. And then this was down at an angle, so I had to pack this up with these spacers. So that's bad quality, really. I hope it doesn't affect the running of it, but it's bad quality, really. Um, and the other thing I don't like is these air filters. Um, they're a bit flimsy, but even though they're on, uh, they're made out of metal. But that thread, as you saw, that that is really bad. You know, um, it's so loose. Actually, they're both loose, and they're not very big. These filters, so that they're soon going to get clogged up. So, you know, when they do get clogged up, if you don't if you don't check it, it means that as the piston um, is coming down to draw in air it's li likely that the, the air will pass through that ring and that won't do the, the piston ring any good because it, it's hard to suck the air out of this filter and so that's about it really um, there is more pros than there is cons um, you know these little things need to be sorted out by a manufacturer but I, I could easily remedy it so I haven't actually used it to spray any paint yet that will be in the next video um, and I might have some more to say about it after then I don't know I haven't actually used it yet when I used this compressor for the first time I realized I made a mistake on the output and I need at least 20 CFM to spray a car so my next video is how I upgrade this compressor.